Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Unity and VR, AR and the future of virtual reality and augmented reality in the Unity game engine. Unity just published a post up on their blog that at first caused quite a bit of an outcry but with some clarifications I'm not actually sure where I stand on this but it doesn't seem that bad of a thing depending on how it's executed. But anyways, they posted this topic about what they're doing with VR, some of the deprecations and things that are changing and so on. So let's jump right into it and and we'll, we'll break down some of the details in just a second. So since day one, Unity has supported most of the major VR platforms and AR platforms. And that's a pretty broad swath of hardware from the Android phones inserted into a device to Google's Cardboard, which is basically a, a do-it-yourself VR device where you put your phone in a cardboard cutout you made, all the way up to the HTC Vive and the um, Oculus Rift. Right from day one, they supported all these different platforms. And then since then, we started getting more and more platforms like Magic Leap, and a HoloLens and so on. And then we got things like AR on the iPad and on Google. So they kind of supported all of this stuff together in an ad hoc way. What they're trying to do right now is consolidate it all together into a unified standard, into the Unity XR plugin framework. So we have been working to improve our multi-platform offering, enable direct integration through unified plugin framework. Uh, the resulting tech stack consists of an API that exposes common functionality across our supported platforms in a frictionless way for creators while enabling XR hardware and software providers to develop their own Unity plugins. This architecture offers the following benefits. Multi-platform developer tools such as AR Foundation and XR Interaction Toolkit, faster partner updates from supported plugins via the Unity Package Manager, and more platforms have access to an interface to leverage Unity's XR rendering optimizations and developer tools. So basically, instead of supporting a ton of different technology stacks, what they've done is created this XR layer and uh, the Unity XR SDK and then a series of plugins for existing uh, products. And they've provided the initial plugins for what we've got here. So you can see at this point in time, we've got AR Core, the XR plugin, AR Kit XR plugin, so that's Google and uh, Apple's AR um, plugins, uh, Oculus XR plugin, the Windows XR plugin, so you've got Oculus Rift, uh, various Rift devices, you've got uh, Windows Mixed Reality and HoloLens here, uh, Magic Leap XR plugin, and VSP third-party XR plugins. Now, what you're missing here is OpenVR from Vive. And that's where some of the whole, the lack of OpenVR support is what triggered a bunch of people. And we're going to get into a little bit of that going on. So you can see the supported platforms. Again, no specific rift shown here, which is a little interesting. And this was definitely a mistake on their behalf when they were doing this. When you don't have open VR uh, shown or, or there's no Vive shown in your, your list here, it does make it look like you just dropped a support for an entire platform, which was definitely a mistake on their behalf. Uh, there is some more details about open VR. We'll get to that in a second. However, there is some bad news with this. Is I Remember I mentioned earlier on they supported the uh, Android phone stuff and the uh, Google Cardboard? Yeah, supported, past tense. Those platforms have been dropped. Now, I think you can probably safely say that for the most part, those platforms are pretty much dead at this point. Um, not a lot of people at least developing for them anymore. It's kind of funny because I actually have a Pixel 1 with a Daydream device and I have a Galaxy S6 with a Gear VR, both of which I kind of keep around for using for VR. But truth of the matter is I haven't used either in over two and a half years. So, Eh, I kind of get this one. Um, so Gear VR is no longer supported in 2019.3 and beyond. Um, so you're moving towards the current gen of hardware and the current features and functionality. So no, no more 3DOF stuff, so three de degrees of freedom. I'd be interested to see what that means for the Oculus Go, though, because uh, it's kind of a Gear VR where the phone is actually built directly into the device, but... I think it's still supported, but Google's VR, so Daydream is now toast as well. Uh, but Google ended sales of the Daydream view, so we're not really shocked by that particular thing. Um, and part of our shift to the new plugin, Valve is using, so here's where your HTC Vive comes in. Valve is using our XR SDK to develop their open VR Unity XR plugin for 2019.3 and beyond. So basically going forward, HTC Vive and OpenVR uh, plugin support is going to be handled by Valve, you know, and, and that's wonderful. Valve has always shipped every product they have ever made in a timely manner, and they're 100% reliable in this regard. So I can get, if you're in this ecosystem where you just, I, I wouldn't believe this for a grain of salt because I don't really have faith in Valve, and I think that to a certain degree, um, Unity are kind of 
p passing the buck on that one. So it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. Um, so you see here, migration instructions basically going from so the support is being deprecated to 2019.3. That means if you're using an earlier version, you can keep on it your long-term stable release if you're developing on an old platform. In fact, that's kind of what you have to do going forward. So if you're developing for AR Core, AR developers using AR Core and the project should continue using AR Foundation and XR Management to load the AR Core XR plugin. AR Kit, same deal. Magic Leap, developers should continue using those two things as well to load in the Magic Leap XR plugin. Uh, developers will need to download the Magic Leap Lumen SDK. HoloLens and Mixed Reality, so Microsoft's ecosystem people, um, using the 2019.3 and later should continue using the AR and XR management to load Windows XR plugin. Is also Microsoft is also releasing a version of their Mixed Reality Toolkit later this month to be compatible with the Windows XR plugin. Now, I do trust Microsoft to be relatively timely. Not Valve, but I do trust Microsoft in this regard. And then developers using the 2018 uh, long-term support version to stay on a stable version can continue developing for HoloLens and Windows MR devices. Note, built-in support for Windows uh, Mixed Reality uh, has been deprecated in 2019.3. We'll, we'll go back to that. That's another one of those things they had to clarify later on. Oculus, Oculus developers using 2019.3 should use the XR management to load the uh, Oculus XR plugin. Developers using the Unity 2018 long-term uh, stable release to stay on a stable version can continue developing for Oculus devices. Uh, Built-in support for Oculus has been deprecated in 2019.3. So again, they're moving to that whole sub thing. Their, their wording of this was terrible. Uh, OpenVR, um, Valve is using their platform to develop this, this plugin. Until that plugin is available, built-in support for OpenVR will continue to be functional and available in 2019.3. So they're not deprecating it to move to an OpenVR plugin because there's nothing there yet and they're waiting for Valve to develop it. OpenVR will remain supported in 2018 LTS. Basically, all of the platforms will be remain supported in Unity 2018 LTS from what I can tell of this. Uh, Gear VR is dead. So if you want to develop for Gear VR, you need to use the uh, 2018 long-term support version. Google VR, same deal. Google Cardboard developers using 2019.3 and later should stay tuned on the latest updates regarding uh, the Cardboard Open Source XR plugin for Unity, which can be found on Google's VR site. So car, um, cargo support, card, sorry, cardboard support going into the future is going to depend on this open source library. But um, Daydream is dead. And Vuforia, well, there's no good news here on Vuforia. Vuforia is just dead dead. Uh, it is supported in the long-term um, support version. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of where we got. So they did brutalize their message in this case. It does, it, when you're on first read, it sounds like Windows Mixed Reality and OpenVR are just gone. And they've done some clarification here. So we'll go into a couple of the comments here. So first off, hey everyone, apologies for the confusion. We genuinely were hoping to achieve clarity with our post, but it looks like we caused more confusion instead. We've amended the blog post to make sure it's clear we are not removing OpenVR support. As part of our shift to the new plugin framework, Valve is using the XR SDK to develop their OpenVR Unity XR plugin for 2019.3 and beyond. Um, that plugin is until that plugin is available, built-in support of OpenVR will continue to be functional and available in 2019.3. So basically, OpenVR kind of continues as it is for today until Valve releases their plugin. Now, if they said that right right up front, it wouldn't have been uh, it wouldn't have been just as bad of a reaction in general anyways. Um, another one here is their Windows Mixed Reality and OpenVR. So they, they basically said Windows Mixed Reality has been deprecated. Bad wording again. Um, so... Windows MR and OpenVR are still supported. There's already a Windows XR plugin using our XR SDK. And then as we mentioned a couple times, Valve is developing their version. Um, I also want to reiterate, it was never our intent to outright remove support for platform from our users if we ignore Gear VR and Euphoria and Daydream, of course, because those were, those were all fully intended to be removed. Um, yeah, so that one kind of keeps going. Let me see what else did I clarify. Yep, so that one I already covered once. And then finally, and this one is a point of a lot of contention. So we got a developer out there that's talking about some of the key problems that you've got in the world of VR right now. And it's kind of a mess. And this is one of those things about Unity in general. So right now, if you're doing VR development, you're probably using the legacy pipeline or the standard pipeline or whatever the hell it's called these days. And it's because you had no support for the HDRP or the universal render pipeline at this point in time. 
So we've got some problems here for sure going forward. So existing developers have issues, no compatibility with the new input system, uh, HDRP and URP pipeline problems in VR, a lack of uh, Vulkan support and forward foveated rendering support was not available as well, as well as Quest support. So there is some clarity coming here and there's gonna be some improvements, some major improvements in Unity 2019.3 on the VR front. And that is that Unity's 2019.3 release is coming soon and there are new features in XR that will roll out in that update. In 2019.3, we have enabled Vulkan for Oculus Quest using multi-view fixed foveated rendering. Additional universal render pipeline and HD render pipelines are both supported in the XR SDK and will continue to be supported. Lastly, our new XR plugins are compatible with the new input system. That means if you add the Magic Leap XR plugin and input system packages, for example, you will get the control controller layout for Magic Leap devices. So that that's actually decent news and they really should have emphasized this in the initial blog post because that's where a lot of the existing problems for VR developers stand. Now again, also they're telling people, okay, well, wait for our next release, wait for our next release, next release. And stability hasn't really been their, their strong suit as of late. So I can still understand why people are definitely apprehensive. If you are doing an in-development VR application right now, you are probably in, in reality stuck on the 2018 LTS version for that platform and you are a hundred percent stuck on the 2018 LTS if your platform of choice was the Gear VR the Daydream uh, cardboard at least until that open source SDK comes up and who knows what's gonna happen with open VR in this case but you know in a nutshell what they've done is they've just abstracted away so instead of using multiple different SDKs and having multiple different ways of supporting they've standardized on a common set of SDKs for AR and XR moved into a plugin based implementation they implemented a number of the plugins there and we're waiting on Google to do the cardboard VR one and the Vi on um, um, sorry um, uh, Steam to release the uh, open VR platform there. So there's a lot of confusion going on here, but in summary, that is where we stand. So the, the nutshell here is they're moving to a standardized system, which on the whole is probably a good thing. It is mostly going to be available in 2019.3 release, along with some um, vast improvements to compatibility with various different renderers for VR compatibility. Um, the Vive is a kind of a coming soon feature, but they're going to continue supporting it until Steam actually ships their version, probably somewhere a little bit after Half-Life 3. And then um, the real kind of takeaway here is Gear VR and Daydream are dead and Cardboard is on live support. So uh, let me know what you think of this change in general. I understand this whole XR stack. You know, they they opened, they they implemented these VR technologies as they came out, and the technology has kind of changed a lot over time. When when these things first came out, if you wanted to develop for the Gear VR, you used the Gear VR SDK, which was different actually even than the Oculus SDK. You wanted to work with the HTC Vive, completely different set of programming interfaces than the Oculus Rift, and they kind of and they implemented them as they needed. Now they've kind of standardized all the technology and so they've standardized their API. I 100% get this. The problem is probably going to be the rate that it is adopted and the stability when it's initially adopted. But I'd be here, curious to hear what you think of this change, what you think of VR development in Unity, or are you doing any VR development at all? Because the, the wind do seem to be out of that sails a little bit, but AR kind of seems to be picking up a bit of it. So interested to hear what you think about these changes. And yeah, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.